Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here, and I am going to do just a mini video. This is going to be super quick. I'm working on a really large project right now that's a multi-day process, but I wanted to make sure to get another video out to thank you guys because I am hitting 8,000 subscribers and it just blows my mind that that many of you guys are subscribing and watching and I wanted to say a huge thank you for that. I have a big mess here. I am going to do this mini video showing you two different things that I've wanted to show you guys but that weren't really long enough to do a video on their own. And I was going to use the same colors for both. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my resin while I'm talking to you guys. I'm using Stone Coat Countertop Quick Coat Resin. And I am using, in this cup, English Navy Apple Barrel Paint that was 50 cents. I'm using Pearl X Powder Pigment in Duo Blue Green. Those are mixed together, just a tiny bit of powder pigment, but it gives it so much depth. In this second one, I am using Tester's Brand Enamel Paint in Metallic Gold, and I'm gonna just mix that straight with the resin. That will float to the surface and give depth and dimension to my pour, even though my pour is only one layer. And then I'm using Apple Barrel White that I put away, and mixing that with a tiny bit of Pearl X powder pigments, oh, that's a tongue twister, Pearl X powdered pigments in Macro Pearl, and just to give some extra shine. Just those three colors. The first thing we're gonna make is a really pretty, delicate little bowl out of resin, and this could just sit as a decoration on a shelf or hold your change or jewelry or whatever. But I got these at Goodwill for a dollar for the set, and they are poach pods. They're to cook eggs in, I believe, in the microwave. And I got them as a set of two, and what I'm going to do is pour into one and then push the other one down into it so that the resin comes up and makes a bowl shape. I'm also going to pour sand into the top one to hold it down. And the reason I'm doing sand and not some of my stones or anything is that I want an even pressure all over this, and I'm afraid if I do stones, I might have some different lumps and things. So I'm going to do that first. All right, we will let that one dry and just let it dry for a couple hours because this is quick coat. And then I'm going to take it apart before it's completely set because I want to cut along the top edge if that has kind of come up into a weird shape. If anybody knows where this is on Pinterest or knows who did it originally, please let me know because I would be happy to give them credit in the comment section. Now I got this for 71 cents at Goodwill. I got a set of six and I had some fun yesterday pouring. You can tell all over here pouring a bunch of different colors into these just to make little jewelry trays that would sit on your dresser. So I like this color scheme and I'm going to do the same thing, the same colors that I used here into this and then embellish it just a tiny bit. resin on fire like I just did. <laughs> I'm going to add just a couple little embellishments. These are some crystals that I got from Michaels when they were having their 70% off their bead sale. And I got these little glass beads from Hobby Lobby. It was a strand of them for four dollars and I got them when they were 50% off. And I'm going to top it off with just some leftover glass that I have. I had mixed some clear mirror glass and some gold together, and I'm going to just sprinkle it on a couple places. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm gonna let this dry and sit and then we'll come back and finish them off. All right, you guys, I'm back. I was gonna let these go a couple hours so I could cut the edge of this, but I went to bed, so it went overnight, which I think is fine. If you heat resin, you can still cut it with a razor blade pretty easily. Here's the first one. At the very end, I poured a little clear in and it, it kind of lets the color from underneath pop through and gives it extra dimension. But I love how some of that gold floated to the surface. I'm gonna draw just a few little acrylic lines and then I will pour a clear coat because if someone is using this for change or jewelry or something and I have acrylic lines on it, they'll scrape those off eventually. So I'm gonna do that and I'm excited to see how this worked. I haven't tried these yet, so I'm going to dump out my sand real quick here. I mean, it does feel hard on the bottom. I just don't know how thin the sides are going to be. Oh, that's cool. All right. Well, you can see it. Obviously, I have the words in the bottom. I'll have to fix that. The sides are a little thin in some spots. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. So what I'm going to do is prop this on a cup and I'll pour clear over this side first. I am going to cut down these edges so that I have a flat edge. And then in here, I'll end up doing the same thing. I'll pour some clear, but that's such a cool idea. All right, let me grab my razor blade, we'll cut this down, and then we'll mix resin and paint and finish up. dry until I get home from work this evening and then I will finish things up and show you how I do the edge of this. All right guys it's about 12 hours later. I moved my other piece out of the way because it's finished. I'll give you a close-up of that when I'm done with everything but I'm going to take a look at this bowl. This looks great. It made it a little thicker and I think that putting resin on the inside will make it thick enough that it's pretty sturdy. And obviously I have to put a little in to get rid of those letters that were from the other bowl that was in top of it. I have a couple of just weird rough edges, so I'm gonna use my razor blade again really quick and then mix some resin. And just like I did with my finger on the outside, I'm going to just put the tiniest bit on the inside. I don't wanna do a lot because this time it's going to go down in and I don't want a big puddle in the bottom. So here we go. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of gold to this to make a little bit of gold into the bottom because even with the resin in there you can still see the shape of those letters. So I'll mix that and then we'll be finished. All right, we're gonna let that dry. I don't know if you noticed because it was going fast, but I actually stuck my torch really close down into the resin um, and kind of lit the paint on fire a little. It's moving around. Let me see if I can get a close up here. You guys can see that, look at that. See how the paint reacts with the resin? So it's gonna make some really cool, cool rings and stuff on the bottom of that. I think it's really neat that you can see it actively moving. See how it makes the ring of paint. So some of that paint is coming to the top and some sinking to the bottom and it's all moving. That is going to be a really cool inside to my bowl. All right, we're going to let that cure overnight and we'll finish up tomorrow morning. My bowl has cured overnight. I'm really happy with the results. I'll give you guys a close up when it's all finished, but I think it turned out great. The edges are not even, and I'm fine with that. I want it to be that way. I even left, instead of fixing it with the scissors, I left a little dip here 
because I like that rough edge look. The last thing I'm going to do is use my same Tester's Metallic Gold Enamel Paint and just paint a little line along the top edge just to add a nice little look to it. When I paint my edges of my geodes and all the different things I use the enamel paint for, one thing I do is I just, instead of trying to go straight down with my brush like this along the edge, I just hold the brush sideways and hit the top. It gives a smooth, clean edge and it doesn't have the bristles going all over the place and making a mess. So this is all you have to do. Quick and easy. And it just adds that last little bit of wow to your piece. Now I'm not trying to make this perfectly even. I don't mind if it drips a little because the whole thing is more of an organic shape and not totally all the same all the way around. I have some flat spots where I cut with my razor blade and things like that, so I think it's going to look really cool. I'm just going around a second time to make sure I've got it coated well. All right, I'm going to let that paint dry and then I will give you guys some close-ups and show you the finished product.